Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage. You know, the other day I was out here, it was in the evening, putting away some fasteners I just purchased. And, um, you know, one of the disadvantages, or I wouldn't call it a disadvantage, but one of the things that happens when you have your shop set up in your garage, the garage door is open and you're out there at night doing whatever, neighbors stop by and they want to talk. <laughs> so, the other night I was participating in an exchange of urban vernacular with one of my close neighbors, and um, an interesting question was posed. This is a little reenactment of that evening. Anthony. Hey, buddy. Dude. Yeah, man. You're, you're kind of like a lower car, right? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> well, I mean, you got all these, these tools and stuff. But what does that thing do? Uh, it's a bowl making jig. Oh, okay, whatever. I got, I got a question for you. So this is normally where somebody asked me to build something for them. And if you're a woodworker and been doing it for a while, you know what I'm talking about. What what ten what ten tools would you take with you if like the whole world was coming to an end or it was Armageddon or whatever? Will there be electricity? No, no electricity. Just like you gotta be able to put it in your bug out pack with the rest of your stuff. So what 10 tools would you put in your bug out pack? You know, and it's kind of a goofy, kind of off the wall thing. And you know, for me, I don't really worry about too much stuff like that. I know I, I am prepared for situations if something comes up. You know, here in South Carolina, close to the coast, we worry about hurricanes. So we have a hurricane plan. We have a bug out pack for that kind of a situation. It's not really for a long term situation, but it started getting me thinking about what I would do if that situation did arise. So here are 10 tools that I would take with me in my bug out pack, and I'll tell you why. So a couple of things I need to point out first off, I'm not talking about cordage, I'm not talking about a pocket knife, and I'm not talking about tools for maintaining tools, like a file or sharpening stones or that. I'm not including that in this list. So you definitely should have those things with you. Of course, that just makes sense. But what I'm talking about is 10 lightweight tools that you can use for woodworking and projects. So. To start off with, obviously the first thing you're going to want to have is an axe. You know, a decent axe that's got a good forge, something with a, that you can replace the head on, and that's lightweight. I don't need to demonstrate this tool because most people know that you can do all kinds of things with this. You know, it acts like a cutting tool, it also can be used for a hammer, and this is really the number one, as far as I'm concerned, the number one thing that I need to have in my pack. The second thing I would probably pick is a lightweight saw, something, and I would prefer something like this over, say, like a pruning saw. Now, this wouldn't be resharpenable, but when I'm, when I, at the end of its life, I could use the material for making knives or, you know, scrapers or whatever I needed to. But the nice thing about this is, I could bring a half a dozen spare blades, and they don't, they barely weigh anything. So it's lightweight, it's handy, and this tool is pretty mean. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so I've got a piece of one and a half inch by one and a half inch poplar in here, and I'm just going to do a quick demonstration on how well a little saw like this works. So you guys can time me if you want to. Here we go. Makes pretty short work of cutting right through something. So another thing some people might not know is that you can take a blade in a saw like this on its edge and you can actually use it as a bit of a scraper so you can scrape off knots if you're trying to smooth out a branch or something like that. So this is definitely a must have in my pack. The next tool is also a saw but it's a little less elegant. This is a pruning saw. Another nice thing about this, it's got a hollow tube, it's super lightweight and I can pack in 20 or 30 or 40 blades and I mean I would barely even know the difference of the weight of the blades because they're so light. This is a piece of an inch and a half hickory nut material and this is really dry. I've had this in the shop now for oh better part of three years. And this blade is fairly dull but I'm going to give you a demo of it anyway. No, I wouldn't take a power drill. But I would miss you so much. One more saw that I would take with me and for the same reason it's lightweight, is a coping saw, just a small one, and you can take a ton of blades with you, and uh, you can use this for all sorts of situations. If you gotta make arrows, bows, any type of situation where you wanna cut a curve, hundreds and hundreds of applications. With the tools I have with me, ultimately, I can make myself a little foot-powered scroll saw with this. Okay, next up on the list, and another obvious choice, is a hammer. 
And you might be thinking to yourself, well, I could just make a hammer in the woods. You can, ab absolutely. But I want a steel hammer with me in case I come across some scrap metal that I can use, I can forge. I want something that's functional, lightweight, and this does the trick. And I can replace the handle on this if this handle breaks, and I don't want a lot of weight in my pack. But this will work. You can forge with a claw hammer, and you can have it, you can use it for doing all kinds of other tasks. The next thing on my item I'm a little bit torn between, and I know a lot of people like to take like Leathermans and that sort of thing, I don't really care for that. So my thought was either I would bring a pair of needle nose pliers that has wire cutting capabilities, or a pair of lineman pliers that you can use for you know big bolts or larger bolts, and it also has the capacity for cutting wire a lot better, a lot, lot larger gauge. So probably end up with the linesman pliers, although I would really miss the needle nose, so I might bring them both, and I might cheat a little bit and bring them both and call it one tool. Now, the next item on my list is, you know, it might be a little controversial, but I would also bring a machete. And the reason why I would bring a machete is because for clearing brush, for taking down small limbs or getting, you know, collecting things, a nice sharp machete will go through a two inch branch, well, when I'm swinging it anyway, without too much trouble. So this would be a great way to very quickly gather a whole bunch of small stock material. A machete can also be used as a draw knife in a pinch and that keeps, that keeps me from having to carry a heavier steel draw knife. So I would definitely have a machete in my pack. Let's go play with this a little bit. Okay, so I'm in my backyard and I have a tree out here that's dying. This is a limb right here. It's just probably an inch and three quarter, maybe two inches, and it's a hardwood, so it's not gonna be, I'm not gonna be able to cut through it through one whack, but it does, machetes will make short work of removing a limb like this. And whenever you're using a machete, you don't wanna chop straight into the material. You wanna chop at about a 30 degree to a 40 degree angle. The next item on my list would be a brace, and I'm not talking about a big heavy brace. Um, I would bring an assortment of drill bits, but I'm counting that as the same a tool that goes with the brace itself. I would probably bring one large auger like this. This is a three quarter inch. I would probably opt for a one inch if I was thinking about a survival situation, but I wouldn't bring a large brace to run this. I could make a handle for this out in the woods, or I could even make like a wooden brace that would, that would operate this as well. So I wouldn't burden my pack with the weight of one of those big metal braces. I would, however, take a small wooden brace like this. Now this is a small wooden brace that I made when I was a kid. I put a hex receiver in it so it can receive any kind of drill bit that's got a hex on the end of it. It can also be, you know, be used for a Phillips head or square head bits, which I would like to have with me in case I need to do some salvaging while I'm trying to survive. So I put a quarter inch bit in my brace and this is a piece of hardwood. I like demonstrating in hardwood because you know if it does work good in hardwood, it's gonna be really easy in softwood. The last couple tools on my list, I'm not going to go through and demonstrate for time reasons. But the first one, the next one would be this. This is just a spoke shave. And this is an old Stanley, and this one's really cool. It actually has a beveled blade on one side and a straight blade on the other. And I would bring this for making things like bow and arrows or making dowels for building projects. This would be a really handy tool. It doesn't weigh much and it doesn't take up much room. <laughs> now, I know some people are going to argue this one, but I, I would take a tape measure just because I. I won't be able to measure stuff. And then last but not least, a utility knife with a ton of extra utility blades, you know, because those are disposable. You can sharpen them to get a little longer life out of them, but the blades are really cheap, they're really lightweight, and this could be used for hundreds of things. Anything you could possibly think of where a knife application would be handy to have, this would work. Well, maybe not a big fillet knife, but you know what I mean. So that's it. Those are the 10 tools I would put in my bug out pack. I put these on a scale, all together they weigh eight pounds, which is, I guess, a little heavier than I'd like it to be. I might try to figure out how to make this a little lighter. But what I wanna know is what would you put in your bug out pack? If you, you know, this is a great opportunity to have some discussion. Comment below about what you think you would wanna put in your bug out pack and what you think might be wrong with my bug out pack if you don't necessarily agree. I'd like to hear what you have to say. I really like these kind of conversations because it really gets that creative, um, juices flowing and it makes you think about what you might do in a situation. So I'd love to hear from you. Please comment below and let me know what you think you would like to have in your bug out pack. Now just keep it to the tools, no weapons, that sort of thing. Those are a given. You know, those are things that we're going to have with us anyway. I want to know what tools you would take with you. 
If you're not busy, this coming Saturday night, and I'll put a link below, I've been invited to do a, a, a show um, called The Maritime Woodworkers. So it's a live show. It'll be on Saturday at 7, I think. I'll put a link below so you can check it out. Uh, Matt Brander, the Bearded Woodworker, and uh, Jason McGinn uh, of McGinn's Woodshops, uh, they both have YouTube channels. Put this on every Saturday. I've watched it a few times. They really have a nice, they have a nice setup. It's very somatic. It's very, it flows real well, and it's enjoyable to watch. So if you don't have anything to do tomorrow night, please come and hang out with us.